Hello, everyone. Welcome to our webinar. We got a very interesting topic today: sensors and remote patient monitoring, changing the dynamics of healthcare. Firstly, please allow me to introduce myself. My name is Isa. I work for TE Connectivity Sensor Solution Division, covering Medical Asia as Market Vertical Manager currently. This gentleman next to me is my colleague Cedric. Would you like to introduce yourself, please? Thank you. Hi, I'm Cedric. I used to work for medical equipment company for several years, and right now I'm work as application engineer. It's very exciting to have the webinar, sharing and discussing the medical trends with you. Thanks. Then let's give a brief introduction.、Uh, Of the topic we will cover today, we are going to talk about five trends taking place in the patient monitoring field. We will present the medical application of sensors, particularly focus on SpO2, which is blood oxygen sensor. We will go to the details such as design principle, the specification, and how it works. Cedric. What's your experience going to hospital? Oh, big headache. Yes, big headache. Because our resources are too limited nowadays, how we are going to solve this problem? Imagine getting preventative care outside of the hospital setting. It is, it is increasingly taking place today. Fortune 500 technology companies and medical providers. Are all looking at new products and devices by reducing hospital readmission rates and allowing patients in remote areas to get the care they need. Eventually, it could revolutionize medical care and streamline cost. Remote patient monitoring is having its day. It could fundamentally improve patient outcomes. And quality of care across the medical field. This includes on-site in hospital and clinics, for at-home care, and for remote care in less populated areas of the country, and in developing countries. By 2018, over five million pieces sensor would be purchased to develop home care or private care. Devices. Existing devices include non-invasive blood pressure devices, which use a pressure sensor, electrical thermistor, which use the temperature elements or probes, insulin pump, which use force sensor to detect the needle block. New concept or new product like non-invasive glucose detector and dynamic. Blood pressure monitoring system using ultrasound, piezo film, or optical sensor catches more and more attentions by the request of、uh, the market. But these devices are independent devices working separately. We need to get all these devices connected. Yes, correct. We need to get all the devices connected. Do you know how much is expected by 2020 for global remote monitoring system? I don't know. 46 billions in、oh, value, in、huge. U.S. dollar. Oh, that's、wow. huge. Yes, as technology continues to dramatically develop, many people believe that the Internet of Things could play a pivotal role in industry after industry. But especially in cre- creating a more connected healthcare ecosystem, in healthcare, IoT may just redefine how apps, devices, and people interact, even connect with one another to deliver healthcare solutions. The benefits: it could help reduce cost, improve outcomes, and disease management. On the other hand, enhance patient experience. Okay, 
Here are some of the changes taking place in the patient monitor field. We believe they are the key market drivers that design engineers need to consider. Clearly, this overlap as IoT spans two important areas. Number one, the development of smart, connected product and devices. Number two, the explosion of big data. The first trend we are seeing, an aging population vulnerable to chronic disease is driving the market. The world population is aging. People are living longer with good health, but many of them are also living longer with chronic disease, putting a strain on healthcare systems and resources. According to the World Health Organization, here is the number for people older than 65. It was estimated 524 million in 2010, and it will be nearly 1.5 billion in 2050, with the most of the increase in developing countries. According to one study, the disease burden associated with a growing elder population will require a large and diverse healthcare workforce that efficiently help to diagnose and treat patients who is complex medical conditions. The chain number two, which is the focus in healthcare industry, is shifting to value based patient-centric care and outcomes. In the past, the system focused on value-based care, the numbers of tests, visits, or operations performed. However, it will be financial incentives to a healthcare model. In this new system, providers are compensated based on how their patients fare. In another words, it is about the quality of care instead of quantity. The advance in sensor technology are making this possible, in part by making gathering new data much easier. Yes, the big data is important. Let's go to chain three. Healthcare big data is having a huge impact on the medical field in all ways. Many industry analysts believe that the big data is moving forward the healthcare industry biggest change. Big data is already having a huge impact on the healthcare field in different areas, and patient-specific data is increasingly available through a new generation of devices and applications. The information is collected through variables home monitors and smartphones. A focus on data in the, com in the coming years has the potential to market healthcare more preventive, predictive and personalized, meaningfully reduce healthcare cost and lead to better patient care. Big data allows medical providers and healthcare professional to accumulate and analyze on a much larger population base and assess huge volumes of new data. In this way, we are opening new areas for research and treatment opportunities. Again, remote monitoring system can help collect this information and play a role in boosting analysis of this relating big data. However, Where's the big data come from? IoT, of course. Actually, IoT is the fourth trend. When we talk about IoT, we actually talk about a method, a method that connecting people, connect everyone, connect everything. In the future, the market rule would be changed. The manufacturer or the companies would not only just provide physical devices to end user, but also provide online service to them. IoT would 
eventually connect patients and the service provider, making them work together in some special field. For example, chronic disease management. By integrating IoT features into medical devices, it promises to greatly improve the quality and the effectiveness of healthcare, bringing especially high value care for the older with chronic conditions, and those requiring constant supervision. Vital body sign would be recorded by different kinds of sensors, and through cloud-based platform, this device can alert doctors and nurses of important changes to, do pro to prevent unexpected health problems, not just cure a disease. Devices today could monitor source of patient behavior, like the glucose level, ECG, and the blood pressure of the patient. The smart monitoring devices of tomorrow make this more, much easier, more effectively, and more efficiently. As you mentioned, variable devices. Actually, this is the fifth chain I'm going to talk about. Variable device technology innovations are driving growth, allowing healthcare to reach new frontiers. According to a study, variable device is highly accepted by end user in healthcare field. The clinical application of variable medical technology is involving fast because technology companies are working with healthcare organizations as a partner to help patients and doctors make better decisions. Consider some of those applications such as sleeping monitoring, temperature monitoring, ECG, non-invasive glucose, even the smart glasses to help the blind people. Is this interesting and exciting? It's interesting and it's exciting, but I have to say it's difficult. We have a lot of problems uh, when, we when we try to develop such variable devices, especially when we want to have these devices work as medical equipment. Top difficulty is power consumption. We need to have uh, MCU, ADC, and such chips in the devices. All of them is power killer. It, is, it would be very difficult for the patient, especially the older people, to charge the devices every day. The second one is we should develop devices based on theory, not just an idea. For example, some customer come to me and uh, they want me to develop some plan or schedule for them to measure the body temperature by the smart watch. In this case, I always ask them, do you have any theory that support you? That the body temperature measured at the waist would represent the core temperature. Or do you have any compensation method that would calculate the relationship between the body and the temperature measured at the hand position? Mm -hmm. That's really important. As I mentioned, right now sensors are applied into devices to record source of patient vital signs. As we can see in this slide, Typically, we are using those sensors in medical devices, especially private or what we call home care devices. Temperature sensor, the electrical thermistor, ECG, the electrical polarity, respirator pressure sensor, and the humidity sensor, sometimes also uh, temperature sensor. Pulse oximeter, optical sensor for SpO2, what we would mention in the following slides. Body pressure devices use the pressure sensor. 
and the ETCO2 IR sensor or infrared sensor or thermal pile. And I'd like to mention some applications that be requested with most frequency recently. The first one, PICO. PICO is short for the pulse index continuous cardiac output. This would measure the performance of the heart. In this procedure, generally, we would inject cold saline into heart and use a temperature sensor and blood a pressure sensor to monitor the response of human body. By a serious algorithm and calculation, we would know the status of heart or lung. This is very useful for those patients who suffered ARDS, organ trans, and heart or lung surgery. FFR is the second one. FFR is a pressure sensor for interventional operation. We would have two pressure measuring points at the tip of the force uh, pressure sensor. FFR actually is short for fractional flow reserve. It calculates the pressure difference at certain points of the vein, especially the coronary artery. As we all know, the blood lipids would, or the blood fat, would accumulate at a certain point of the vein and finally block the vein. We could use this sensor to check the seriousness of the block before surgery or the success of the surgery. 3D force detection. This kind of sensor could be used in two different kinds of medical equipment. One is ablation. Doctors use special leader which would be very hot, about 95 degree, to kill tumor or bad tissue. Doctors cannot see anything in this microcut operation. Therefore, 3D force sensor at the tip of the needle would provide information to the operation. How closely the needle contact with the human tissue. The other application is surgery robot. It would provide the touch feeling to the doctors behind the machine. Non-invasive blood glucose measurement catches a lot of it attention and this is a fourth application that asked frequently recently. Right now we generally have two different technologies to do this. One is ultrasound technology which I have no idea at all. The second one is using the optical sensor as SPO2. The problem or the difficulty to do this, to have this device is how to make the device compatible to everyone. Well, it sounds very high technology. Yeah. And as we already talked about the optical sensor of, for SPO2, let's see the benefit of TE's product. First, the accuracy. We are providing components to the market with very high accuracy. We could have, uh, we could tight the wavelength tolerance up to 2 nanometers. And uh, the higher re reliability with proven design and the track record in the market is the second benefit for our customer. Actually we are doing this business for over 27 years and we are already sold over 25 million pieces optical sensor to the market. We are very proud that we are the technology provider proven by the market. The third benefit for our customer is we are providing a lot of choice, a lot of selections for customer. For example, we provide emit with different wavelengths from six, 660, 880, 
5, like 140. And the receiver size is from 8 square millimeter to 2 square millimeter. The last one is we are not just providing the component, we are also making the assembly. T connectivity provides both components and the complete sensor package for the market. The capability makes us the leading choice for pulse oximetry applications that require high degrees of processing, durability, and performance. Okay, let's see the let's briefly talk about the SPO2 sensor, the optical sensor. First, the principle actually is very easy. We should have emitter components and the receiver components work together. The light passes through finger would be absorbed by receiving components. The light attenuation is a result of the absorbing energy by bones tissue and blood. During a short time, the only variable parameter is the blood, the blood content. We use this difference to calculate the oxygen level. In the blood, we have cell called oxygenated hemoglobin very hard to pronounce, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which would absorb more infrared light and uh, deoxygenated hemoglobin comparatively absorb more red light. The absorbing difference is the salary basement for pulse oximeter. Let's see our standard optical pass, EMM. 4,000 series and the EPM 4,001 series is our standard part. Both of them is lead frame. Of course, we are developing SMT package optical sensor for SPO2. It's coming soon. For emitter, we are providing different uh, wavelengths to the market. 660, 880, 905, 940, 100, 1050 mm -hmm. nanometer. We could sell them alone or we could package together what we call the dual driving wavelength components. And uh, for the receiver, 8 square millimeter receiver is the most popular one in the market. As I already mentioned, we are not providing the component to the market. We are also making assembly, disposable one, reusable one, and uh, uh, soft silicon one. Mm -hmm. All right. Now this slide presents our main application of different sensors. Our sensor technology is backed by a strong company, TE Connectivity. TE is one of the world leaders in connectivity and sensor solutions. Currently, the combined connectors and sensors market worth 170 billion, and it is growing at rate of 6% annually. annually. Through more than 20 strategic acquisitions, we now offer one of the industry's largest sensor portfolios. We focus all our product development on quality engineering and manufacturing to meet harsh environment requirements. Actually, 80% of re revenue is from it. Okay, here I want to ha share some applications or share some sensor applied in medical equipment, especially for the patient monitor. First, uh, as we can see in the presentation, is a temperature probe. Here, G2.2, GA2.2K1004 is a standard product that we make for the uh, for patient monitor to measure the skin temperature. We also could use this for core temperature monitoring. 
and based on this kind of sensor, this disposable one, we are also developing some smaller probe that would be used inside the human body to check the kidney temperature. This is normally used for the Foley catheter application. And the last one is the SPO2 assembly. As I already mentioned, we are not just providing components to the market, we are also providing assembly to the market. And as we can see in the picture, we are not just, we, the shape is selectable, and the wavelength is selectable, yes. the connector is selectable. So this makes many options. Yeah, many options for our customers. Mm -hmm. some, it's good for them yeah. to make unique products. And the last one is 6020 or 630, just as our SPO2 or optical sensor. We are not just providing the component to the market, we are also making the assembly to the market. What kind of uh, application is this sensor for? Uh, normally, this sensor is used for the IBP, what we, uh, what, which is short for invasive blood pressure. And uh, based on the same technology, the same sensor, uh, some manufacturers, some medical equipment companies using this sensor to develop some new applications like ICP, which checks the pressure in our brain and uh, also use such pressure sensor to check the uh, in the Foley catheter application to check the blood, blood the, the pressure in abdomen or mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah, that's all for me. <laughs> Thank you. You really do a good job. Thank all right, um, this is the end of the webinar today. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for your time to listen to us. And we look forward to more communication with you in near future. Bye. Bye.